Good evening, and thank you all for coming out. Those of you watching virtually, I'm Magic D, part of PACT, P-A-C-C-T, stands for Promise Advocacy, Advocacy for Children and Community Transformation. Tonight is very exciting. We got some students that are going to be doing some uh, something very important tonight. But before we get into that, I want to thank uh, Allen Chapel AME Church and Pastor Southern Millard for opening up their doors uh, to us this evening. And then I also want to uh, wish well uh, the candidates that were invited but not uh, here tonight. Uh, Alan Hager, uh, Dan Kolschenek, and incumbent uh, Jenny Hill, and Arias Hern 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 I'm sorry, Arias Herdon. So fortunately, we do have one candidate we'll be hearing from tonight. Definitely looking forward uh, to hearing from her. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our student leaders this evening. Hi, my name is Levi. Hi, my name is Mackenzie. Hi, my name is Pixie. Hi, my name is Selena. Hi, my name is Maya. Hi, my name is Caden, and we are here for Ms. Murphy. Hi, my name is Carla Murphy. I am a parent of three. Uh, one graduated in 2019. The other two are juniors at Lenorex High School. We have lived in Kalamazoo for seven years, and um, we don't hate it. It's pretty cool. Um, I was asked to run for school board, and I am actually getting really excited about it. Um, <clears throat> there have been a couple things going on uh, in the past and around the state in different school boards that um, are kind of scary and bother me. Uh, so I'm hoping to make sure that they don't happen here in Kalamazoo Public Schools. Um, and uh, some of those things involve equality, um, access to books um, for everybody, um, rights for students, um, all kinds of things like that. So I am here to answer your questions, any questions that any of you might have for any reason, and um, hope that I can bring those concerns to the school board. Okay, for my first question, what do you see as the local, state, and in intuitions, and in systems, criminal justice system, housing, educational system, financial system, healthcare system, nonprofit system that uphold white supremacy and genetic racism? For each one of the systems that you named, please provide a sentence or two on the role these systems play in upholding Semitic racism? That was a really big question. I might need you to repeat some of it. Okay. Do you want me to start from the beginning? Yeah, if you can just go like one at a time. Okay. What do you see as a local state intuitions and systems? That, what was the next part? Criminal justice systems, housing, educational systems. Oh, cool. So local or state criminal justice. Okay. So local or state criminal justice issues. Well, I know that the Kalamazoo Department of Public Safety has um, SROs in the high schools. And um, I know that my kids have been at Lloyd Norix. So that in particular has bothered me. Um, and I would like the SROs out of the schools. That is something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, right after we moved here to Kalamazoo in 2015, my son started his freshman year at Lloyd Norix. And uh, he um, was sitting in the cafeteria. I think it was his third day at Lloyd Norix. And um, 
a fight broke out and the SRO was called and he got pepper sprayed. My son was not involved. But the fact that uh, SROs are in schools and use pepper spray on students because of a fight um, seems overboard, unnecessary. Um, so in going back historically, you can go back as far as you want. You can go back to um, a couple years ago, there was a 15-year-old who was improperly handled and died due to improper string techniques, all of these other things. Like, we just need to have police out of the schools. And that was just one tiny part of your very large question. Thank you. For the next question, is if elected, in what ways would you use your elected office to fight counter institutionalized white supremacy and systematic racism? Um, very first thing that I would do is um, fight, request, ensure that um, all of the school board is going through approved um, anti racism training and not just the board but um, that all of the teachers in all of the schools are going through anti-racism training. Not just a four hour click through on a PowerPoint training, but like a full day training where they have to actually discuss it and confront because it doesn't matter how long or how good of an ally you think you are, everyone has built in lived experiences that reinforce their implicit bias in them and they have to work on it all of the time, every day. Me, you, everybody, everyone does. Um, so <laughs> ensuring that um, the staff go through that and that there is uh, someone in the school system, like I know that Nick Hingay Bergman used to be the person, I don't know who currently is, that was handling um, diversity training and DEI and inclusion and all of those things, um, that there is someone there who is supported and well-funded to ensure that when these issues come up for staff and for students, um, that they have the support to go and ensure that these things are handled equitably um, in each and every instance. And that when they're raised up to the school board, if it ever, first of all, it shouldn't get that far. Second of all, if it does, they know how to handle it. For our next question, what is a personal life experience that you have that will inform a guide's way you will fight the systematic racism if elected? So this isn't something that I um, run around sharing very often, but um, my grandmother was disenrolled from her tribe. Uh, she was a long time ago, she has passed on a long time ago. Um, she was a member of the Signa Chippewa Indian tribe and she was disenrolled. So very often throughout my life, you hear people say things like uh, slurs against Indians, like they are alcoholics and they only gamble and they only this and they only that. And I then say, that is not true. My grandmother is not like that. My uncle was not like that. I am not like that. That is my background and that is my heritage and that is how I grew up. I know that is not true. But then you have people in the community who have these images and these stereotypes and these built-in beliefs because someone is something that's Everybody is like that, period, and you can't convince them otherwise. And so that is something that I have had to confront and reconnect with even after my grandmother has passed away and uh, pass on to my children uh, so that they can stand up, know who they are, and carry that forward.
What is the most immediate change, large or small, that you hope to accomplish if elected? Pay school employees. Uh, they, especially the para pros, um, they are incredibly underpaid. If I met and spoke with a lot of them within the last month, and they are just so underpaid. Some of them were trying to explain to me that uh, there are steps. Um, and if they work, they can, for a year, they can move up another step. And that step pay increase is one cent. I cannot think of anyone who, like, when I started working, I'm going to age myself here, 25 years ago, um, at McDonald's, every six months, we were guaranteed a wage review increase. And 25 years ago, our minimum wage increase was five cents every six months. So why would an educator or someone who helps educate students every single day only be guaranteed a one cent per year pay increase when they are educating our students, ensuring that they are safe, that they haven't been harmed, that they are providing food or transportation shelter, all of these things. I cannot believe that is a thing that our school district is participating in. Because if they're making 987 or 850 or $12, that is not enough to live on at all. The next question is, how will you personally work to maintain transportation and dialogue with the community? Transparency. Oh, okay. Transparency and dialogue? Okay. So that's a really great question. Um, I am blessed to work from home. So um, I have equipment that I have for my job, which allows me to be available on my cell phone pretty much 24 seven. So if you need to call me, you can call me. And I also maintain my Facebook. Um, so if you need to send me a message, you can send me a message. Um, and if you need to email me, you can email me. If you need to stop by or you need me to come to you, I am more than happy to meet up. It might take a minute for me to get there because I've got two kids in high school. One's involved in the musical and the other one is doing agri science in Pittsburgh. But I will be there at some point. How will you... How will you work to board and citizen authority in your institution's decision making? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear that. Can you repeat it? How will you work to board and citizen authority in your institution's decision making? How will I work toward? Authority. Citizen authority. Citizen authority. Oh, OK. Sorry. Citizen authority. Um, there have been requests for the last couple years to have a student member of the school board, and I think that would be great. Um, when my son was a senior at Lloyd Norris and they were searching for a new principal, they actually got a bunch of students together and brought them into the principal interviews. And then it took their advice when considering who to hire for the next principal. Why they don't have a student input onto the current school board, I don't have a clear answer on that. So for there to be, whether it's a junior school board or one student, however that would look, I would welcome that input. That's why I'm here. You guys have questions. I'm sure that you do. Um, and I would like to answer them. And if you are going to be attending the schools for the next year, two years, five years, you should have some input into how your school is run as well. How will you engage and support youth voices in your office? Um, I would 
again, uh, try to uh, implement that idea that's been brought forth before um, and have a student representative or possibly a whole nother uh, what a committee, student committee um, voice to the uh, KPS trustee board, however they phrase it. Um, there, there are so many ways. And right now, none of them are being considered or implemented as far as I'm aware. I can't speak because I'm not a current member, um, but I would absolutely welcome student input. Um, prior to this year, um, and some folks can speak to it, I was a Girl Scout troop leader. Um, not that um, a lot of the boys would really care, but when my son was a Boy Scout, I was also a uh, mentor for their badges. And um, you guys have so much energy and so much power and so much drive to go and do the things that you want to do. And for that, for an entire school board to hear people say, people as in students, actual active students say, we want you to listen to us. Can we please have a voice and then not make that happen? I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense to me. You guys are able to plan, do, and take action. It's like the way of the scout. You make a plan, you do it, and then it's done. Like, hello. You guys should be running the school board, but you're busy going to school, so you can't. But you should at least have a seat to come and speak. I don't know why that hasn't happened yet. The end. Thank you. <laughs> For our next question, what are your thoughts on diversity libraries in public schools and charter schools? Um, I think that all students should have access to all books that qualified librarians have already read through and vetted. Um, I am not a librarian, even if I did work in a library when I was 16, but I know that they learn and study and go to school and get degrees, and um, they learn about uh, appropriate age levels, they learn about uh, psychology and what is appropriate for certain ages, and learning about it doesn't make someone do it. I learned about coding and I'm really bad at it. Like really bad. I work in cybersecurity. I know about it. I um, implement uh, rules and make other people go fix their bad code because I'm able to understand applications and programming, but actually writing in C? No, absolutely not. Cannot do it. So knowing about a thing is not the same thing as making people do a thing. Learning about world history is not the same thing as making people practice religion. Two completely different things. Um, and that goes for all of the types of books available. That's Having them available does not make a school is not the same thing as a school making a student practice or become a thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Another question is, how would you support students having the freedom and courage to be their authentic selves? I would um, ask um, our local uh, groups, we have so many groups available here in Kalamazoo, um, to uh, be available. We have communities and schools. We have out front. We have um, so many other really great uh, groups available um, to come and uh, give presentations, make papers aware, um, just that they exist. A lot of people, okay, so almost everybody knows that out front exists. That, like that would be silly to say that they don't know, but um, there are other super helpful um, groups that exist, and if um, everyone were aware, like I just learned this, my kids came home from high school and said um, 
the teal sticker on the door means it's a safe classroom and you can go and talk to the teacher about anything. Not all the doors have them. If we knew that last year, we could have directed our friends to those classrooms and to those teachers. And I said, you didn't know? And they said, we didn't know. And I'm like, well, I didn't know either. How can we make that more known in your school? And they're like, that's a great question. All right, cool. So let's make it more known. Tell everybody. Literally go tell every single person you know. Put flyers up in the hallway. Do something because um, I guess the teal sticker in particular <laughs> is mental health. So if you're struggling with your mental health and you're in a high school and there is a teal sticker, that is someone that you can go talk to and be safe. Our next question is said, you brought up removing SROs from schools, but what is your plan to control slash migrate student violence? And what would you make more sense to ensure we have properly trained SROs? To control or mitigate student violence? Well, I personally cannot go hug every student, nor can I rescue every student. As much as I want to, I just don't have the space in my house, nor do I have that type of funding. But um, I do know that when one of my kids was in elementary at Prairie Ridge, Griffin Place did offer um, training for mediation. And from what I understand, um, the school board is working on a plan to um, expand that, but they've been talking about that for a couple years. And I understand COVID like had some delays, has delayed that a bit because they weren't always in school and funding and all of those things. I do know that the peer mediation program in elementary schools did help. But I also know that in order for it to work, we have to have admin backing. We can't have SROs and mediation. They can't coexist and uh, have mediation be the victor. That's not going to work. Um, studies have shown repeatedly that um, with SROs in the schools, things that teachers would normally hand over to the um, security staff or would normally hand up to the AP or to the principal get passed off to the SRO instead. And I'm not just talking about in KPS, I'm talking countywide, I'm talking statewide in Michigan. And this is increasing Police. This is increasing police records. Um, and if the city is working on decriminalizing some acts, why are we maintaining police in the schools? This is counterintuitive to what we want to do. If we want to increase graduation rates, if we want to increase children in our schools, keep them in school so they can remain in the building so they can be educated. Other than um, paying raises, do you have a plan to repair retention, teacher retention? Oh, well, I know that pay is the number one item. Um, I know that um, actually being able to take time off is the number two item. And that also is not just here in Michigan. It's not just here in KPS. That is nationally. Teachers across the nation are burnt out. Um, I do know that in KPS, um, a lot of things have been changed and mitigated um, that were not put in place in other districts. Um, in some districts, they were having teachers wear cameras and teach virtually while at the same time teaching physically present, which um, caused a huge turnover like even more significant than what we have here. So are there some things that KPS did right? Yes, there are. Um, so this isn't 
me trying to say everything that KPS has ever done in the entire world is absolutely wrong and I hate them because then why would I want to even be near them? No, they did a lot of things right over COVID. And there are some things that they continue to do, right? They continue to work on the HVAC. They continue to work on some other things. Just, I want to make sure that we continue to be a progressive school district. So how do we retain teachers? We don't leave them in classrooms without effective AC for 25 years. There is at least one classroom at Loy Norris that gets up to 90 degrees in the summer when the AC is on. And that teacher has several fans and opens the windows. But the, and if the teacher is okay with that, that's one thing, but the students shouldn't also be subject to that. Ever since we started here, when my son was a freshman and he graduated in 2019, so eight years, this is our eighth school year. He hasn't been, they haven't been able to use the water fountains. I think they're starting to be able to use them because they finally completed the service pipe replacement, I think, but I'm not sure. Um, that's a long time to go without water in the schools. Um, the bathrooms are locked down. The bathrooms are constantly locked down. So functioning bathrooms, functioning teacher break rooms, functioning water, um, you know, basics. Basics that any human being would need, not just our students, but you know, basics would be a great way, I think, to retain teachers, probably. That would be, that would be my guess, is to focus on the buildings. How would you promote families being heard at school board meetings? How would I promote families being heard at, um, heard at school board meetings? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first they need to have access. Um, I would definitely, uh, one of my priorities would be to make sure that there was a call-in line like there was over COVID when no in-person meetings could take place. Um, oftentimes, uh, school board meetings end up finishing up because there, there's no public comment. And the reason there's no public comment is because there's no public. And um, there's no public because the public is driving or cooking dinner or taking care of household chores or whatever it is, you know, work all of these things that comprise our daily lives. They can't take time out to go down to one particular building and sit there for 45 minutes to give a three minute comment. We have too much going on in our lives. Again, me personally, like I, as I've stated, I live a very privileged life. I work from home. I go downstairs at eight, I work until five and I'm done. Um, except for picking my kids up from Norix after they do the musical or um, sometimes I drive out to Vicksburg because of whatever. But even then, that's about to end for me because my kids are 16. They're going to drive and we can afford to buy another vehicle for them. Um, it was $800, <laughs> but it runs. So I'm incredibly privileged that I can do this. Um, nobody else can. They can't take time out every single day or every two Thursdays and sit for 45 minutes and be like, well, I'm going to talk for three minutes and then I'm going to sit and maybe they'll go into closed session and maybe they'll come back. We don't know. No, open up a phone line. The city of Kalamazoo does it. Kalamazoo County does it. Leave a message. It's not hard. They already have Google set up. They have Zoom set up. It allow people to actually interact with the school board.
What is your strategy to create? Buy in from others, from the other board meetings. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna have to think on that for a second. I feel as though at least one of the other board members is um, probably going to be on my side um, from the get-go. Um, another board member can probably, will, will feel less intimidated. Um, and, and then a third board member um, will feel more empowered to come along if I were to earn your vote and be able to have discussions with them on a more regular basis. Um, as for some of the other board members, um, I have worked with people like them in the past, and oftentimes it's not so much a buy-in as a compromise, as rephrasing things to show the benefit of being in a more progressive stance to them. Um, here are the benefits versus here, here's the loss of benefits if we don't move in this really great, ideal, sparkly direction. And so um, sometimes it's just a very careful walk. Thanks for answering our questions. Would you like to leave any final thoughts or comments? Um, yes, I would like to thank uh, AME for hosting us. It is a beautiful building. I um, am not a regular church goer for personal reasons, but that does not take away from the fact that it is absolutely gorgeous here. It is wonderful and I am so pleased to have been invited so thank you for hosting us um, and I would like to thank each of you you all were wonderful and I couldn't have asked for better questions um, thank you so much Uh, thank you all for uh, watching at home. Um, please, uh, again, uh, these scholars uh, are, are leaders. We, we appreciate them. Uh, please make sure you are checking out the, the PAC Facebook page because there will be some more forums uh, coming up. The next one is uh, October 5th at Vine Neighborhood Association. Yes, all of the other candidates were invited. Unfortunately, uh, we did not uh, get a response or a, a timely response uh, from the other candidates. So we are grateful uh, that candidate uh, Murphy uh, showed up. And I am so grateful for all these scholars here for um, exercising their right and their voice. And students, you can do that as well. So again, thank you all again. And thank you, Pastor Southern Millard. Uh, and Allen Chapel AME Church uh, for your home. And thank you all again uh, for uh, attending in person. Thank you all, be safe and have a good evening. Yeah, I just made this.